Dmitri, on paper, now I brought this name out with excitement, it feels like I knew and loved this person. In the Lykov family, he was special. He prayed like everyone else, but he was not a fanatic. Taiga was the main home for him. Dmitri grew up in her and knew her perfectly. He knew all the animal paths, for a long time he could observe every creature, he understood that, like a man, she also wants to live. It was he who, having matured, began to catch animals. Prior to this, the Lykovs did not know meat and did not have skins. He knew where to dig a trapping hole and where not. He even caught a wolf in a makeshift trap. Perfectly knowing the habits of animals, he said, Musk deer is a lazy beast, all its way through the taiga from our path from the river to the house. He knew how an elk walked in deep snow, and he could pursue a deer all day, catching up and stabbing with a lance. Dimitri was amazingly hardy. Sometimes I walked barefoot in the snow. He could spend the night in the taiga in winter. In a canvas shovel, then when the frost is about 40. I caught fish, the geologists say, standing barefoot on a stone in the middle of the river raises one leg and stands like a goose on the other. All taiga information flowed to the Lykovs through Dmitri. He knew where, what and with what beast happened. Agafi showed hazel grouse chicks, squirrels and gaina. Look. 4. It's cold, so we're gathered, with the first kind bear, Dmitri converged closely, when he made a decision. He was afraid of us, but the bear approached Mitya like that, Agafi reached out with a stick to her backpack. The younger Lykov's character was quiet and even. He did not like to argue. Savina will only say, okay, you, he willingly did any work. Almost all birch bark are produced by him. And he prepared birch bark. He knew at what time the birch gives it away best. The stove in the house was built by Dmitri. I made a mortar with a pestle on an elastic horizontal pole. You knock, and the pestle flies upward, like on a spring. Dmitri made a stanachek for spinning a spindle, weaved muscles for fishing from brushwood. Even for an exhibition. Dmitri was always willing to visit the camp of geologists, although outwardly he did not show joy. He will examine everything, touch it with his hand, say quietly. Yes, seeing a picture on the cardboard wall of the calendar, he asked. Moscow? And he was glad that he himself recognized the city, which he had heard about more than once. In the building, where the diesel was puffing, Dmitri felt uncomfortable, plugged his ears, twisted his head, not understanding the connection between this noise and the light that burned in the houses. But what an impression made on him by the sawmill. He was just dumbfounded watching this car, said Arafay. The saw. Worker Gasha Sitchev immediately became for him the most dear person in the village. You can understand. The log which Dmitri has been painting for a day or two, here before our eyes turned into beautiful even boards. Dmitri touched the boards with his palm and said, good. Dot dot in October last year, the four Lykovs came for their usual visit. They asked me to help them dig potatoes. And they said that Dmitri was sick. A week ago I was walking down the mountain in the rain, and, not getting warm, began to help my brother put a stab on the fish. Now he lies in a fever and suffocates. Physician Lyubov Vladimirovna Ostromova, who asked to tell in detail about the disease, immediately understood, pneumonia. They offered medicine, offered to take the patient to the village by boat, said that we would call a helicopter. They refused, we cannot do this. As much as God gives, as much and will live. When the Lykovs returned home that evening, October 6, 1981, Dmitri was lying on the floor in a river hut, dead. They buried him in a cedar log, under a cedar, away from the hut. When we left the Lykovs, we stood near the grave, and I asked Arafay to look into the hut. It was boarded up. As his man Arafay pulled out the nails, and we found ourselves in a low, black with soot and cold, like a cellar, chopped kennel. All the same boxes with dried potatoes, nuts and peas. Burlap clothes hung from a nail driven into the wall. Worn brown deerskin boots stood by the door. On the window is a candle stub, four factory fishing hooks, a picture from a cigarette box with a picture of an airplane. Where could he lie here? And this is where we stand, on the floor. The floor, as in the hut above, was springy from cedar and potato husks, from fish bones. Arafay and I, elderly people, who had seen a lot of everything, suddenly shuddered together, imagining how a man was dying on the floor, in the gap between the musty boxes. Arafay boarded the door. I stuck it with a stake for reliability, and we went to Abakin. Here, by the path along the canyon, 
lay a dugout, covered with birch bark boat, not yet completely finished. Dimitri told me. Arafi recalled. That there will be a boat. We will see each other more often. You don't always wait Abakin, Arafi recalled one conversation with Dimitri last year just at this unfinished boat. I said, you are a wonderful carpenter. Come to us. People are needed. And we all love you. Dimitri looked at me with eyes full of gratitude, but did not answer. I think, had this death not happened, he would have come to us little by little. I ask you to share these videos in your social networks, using the buttons under the video and subscribe to the channel. I ask you to go and watch other videos about Agafia Lakova, which you now see on the screen in the end screensaver.